Hello, this is the fifth game played in the 7 Kisei title match between Fujisawa Hideoki and Chochi Kun, who play wide this time and he managed to win by resignation. At the stage, Black uh, gave up the game, he was already about 10 to 12 points behind, and there was nothing to do to come back. And from the beginning, it felt like uh, White is doing well, he was slightly ahead, and then in the middle game, uh, he got even a, a better position and managed to keep the lead till the end. So let's check it out. First of all, uh, Black starts with a Hoshi and a Komoku on the right side, which is a very common uh, opening. And White played the Sansan, that's extremely territorial and it's also very popular nowadays. And then a Komoku facing the, the bottom right corner. That's a little bit questionable, but White has a plan here and we will see in the next few moves what he had in mind. Normally, uh, White plays a Komoku or another Hoshi here. Or even a Sansan. I remember Chochi Kun and uh, Sakateo or even uh, Lee Chanko, they used to, to start many games uh, with a double Sansan as white. So it's a matter of uh, style or taste, but nowadays playing Sansan it's extremely trendy, both when you're just uh, building the corner with the Sansan or invading your opponent's corners to, to grab the territory. <clears throat> and Chochi Kun is quite uh, famous for his territorial style. Oops, I jump ahead a bit too much. So, uh, luckily, white can play uh, d5 or d6 in order to prevent being pressed down. Then black will either extend for a base or make a shimari, a high one or a large shimari. But white had a plan with this um, kakari. So black plays a pincer. Now the idea here is that uh, Play, playing a Kakari like uh, R5, it's a bit more active or aggressive compared to simply defending the corner because like this, it allows the, the Shimari, whichever Shimari Black wants. So with this move, White is trying to be active and develop all over the board. Now, Black plays the tight pincer and luckily, White can think about a one space jump to separate or a Kema like P6. Now the most common Josekis when white plays p5 it's to continue with uh, Kema to get one step ahead on the fourth line for black. Now according to AI usually white will push several times and black simply gets ahead on the fourth line in order to prevent the Han and being pressed down. And after all these pushes uh, as white who uh, gets a wall, white is supposed to pincer to, to counter attack the q7 original pincer. And if this happens, uh, black can press down on the left and then Kema in order to grab a nice Moyo. Actually, it's already a territory on the, the bottom side. So this is what uh, black, it's, uh, it feels comfortable for black to build this kind of territory on the bottom side. Therefore, let's go back to the original game. <clears throat> so another Joseki that happens very often with this kind of jump and Kema, uh, white will counter pincer directly, then black jumps along, and when white connects under to grab the territory on the side and corner, uh, black is very happy to set up the Moy on the bottom side. So again, black has this kind of uh, potential on the bottom area. Therefore, uh, white is not very happy to, to continue directly. Oops, that's the original game. And I also mentioned the, the Kema here, so if black plays a Kosumi, white will push along, then push again, cover, black can expand the bottom side, white jumps, black extends. This is the kind of Joseki that used to be played uh, back in the day, but the AI suggests pretty much the same line of uh, sequence. So this is pretty much what uh, black wants to happen, to develop the, the bottom side and the right side, while white simply runs out. Therefore, uh, with this kind of double approach, White actually is thinking to discard the original uh, corner approach, so R5 can die in order to, to develop the bottom side. So now what happens? Uh, black covers to surround uh, R5 and separate White stones. Then White extends for a base, but in the same time, J3 is a pincer against uh, E3. And then Black simply... Uh, reinforces the lower right corner. If black doesn't play a move like r6, let's say black comes out 
and then plays away. White is very happy to, to live in the corner by playing these kind of moves. Now this sequence is pretty much forced, so white grabs the corner and what happens? Black got the wall, but the wall is facing white stones on the bottom, so it's completely meaningless for black as white already has a group in front of the wall. So this was white's original plan and therefore, oops, black had to, to add another move to keep the corner safe. Now in this position, uh, white it's about 55% uh, against 45%, but that's because AI thinks white has a six and a half comic, but this game was played with five and a half, so it's still kind of even. Now the game uh, proceeds with this move, the d3 goes to Mitsuke, but white could invade the top right corner directly. Well, this is a move that nobody used to consider back in the uh, early 80s, but nowadays it's like the top choice. So locally playing d3 puts a lot of pressure on e3 and uh, we can see the, this was some kind of trade in the Fuseki. So black is uh, taking the low right corner, but kind of left uh, e e3 very thin. So white goes for compensation here. So now black play the move that's actually the top choice in the AI uh, suggestion too. This kind of attach. This is a way for black to, to set up a sabaki on the bottom side. Now if black simply plays nobi to prevent the tiger mount, white will continue with the kema to grab the corner and put pressure on the two stones. Then black comes out with a shoulder hit. White pushes several times to keep the pressure on black group and then defends again on the left side against the cut at uh, c5. So this way white builds a nice territory on the left side and the bottom while black is still running out, uh, being a little bit over concentrated. Therefore, black came uh, up with a very artistic move in order to set up a sabaki. So wh white can uh, either go nobi to the left or nobi to the right. Uh, white can also consider hane one way or the other. But usually uh, against a contact play, one has to consider simply uh, responding with nobi extend one way or the other. So if white simply pulls back at k3, the group becomes a little bit over concentrated and this way it's more comfortable for uh, black to, to fix a base or to create a sabaki. Well, white gets ahead in order to keep the stones separated and put more pressure on black's uh, thin stones. So black got a few more forcey moves here then push along to set up a wall. Even if black gives up all the territory on the bottom, there are some cutting points and Aji. But here the honey is inevitable and at this stage white it's about 55% uh, ahead or fairly to win the game. Of course black cuts and it's good tactic to, to play Atari first, makes white, uh, black heavy and then go up to separate uh, the groups. So here the fight seems to be already promising for white because white is actually splitting two heavy groups and therefore it's a bit uncomfortable to, to play as black in the local area. So black has to jump out with the Ikentobi. Ikentobi is really bad. Now he jumps along and white does the same thing. So white still keeps 55% uh, here when he separates and uh, saves the keystones in order to, to keep the pressure on the two black heavy groups. Uh, this is quite proper to, to escape with the Kosumi towards the right side. So white jumps again because he can tell me it's really bad according to the proverb. And actually black should do the same. Here black can simply come out with a one space jump. Playing the attach, uh, black wants to, to defend indirectly by pressing the corner a little bit. So the only move is to, to stand and then create two cutting points. So black covers to, to stay connected with the important group. Then another forcey move. Here black can also think about the bamboo connection because it's going to affect the other stones in the middle, impacting the liberties. But 
this way uh, there's one less co threat and also taking away liberty for the corner might help later uh, in the fight against the corner this exchange is not really necessary why can push along and keep attacking directly now this would be very severe but also k might an option like it happened in the actual game so on this move if black simply connects why can either connect solid or continue the attack in a very light way because the group on the left side it's still under a lot of pressure and doesn't have any eyes but why decides to play this attach first in order to make sure um, l5 group doesn't connect to the right easily then push through and attack the group on the left side so actually this feels like an inducing combination um, white could play nobi and when black defends like this or like this continue the attack on the left side but we will see the exchange the m6 play uh, pretty soon so this is an important move a vital point to try to seal off the the black group so this is already the one of the most critical moments of the game where white is attacking very severe the the left side group so far the game feels very comfortable for white chasing the the big dragon inside his moyo now here uh, black found a way to create some eye shape then white switch uh, the attack a little bit to the other group this is a very important key point to to play m6 threatening the cutting points and also prevent the tiger mount now black defends uh, with an artistic shape if black simply connects solid that's uh, considered heavy and if black plays kosumi white can push and then peep and keima so black shape it's a little bit heavy now playing this kind of formation if white pushes black can block and create some eye shape white still separates uh, the group from the right and this way with the kma he reduces the potential on the right side and keeps the pressure on the the group in the middle and actually what happens here uh white is attacking two groups at once so he still got the, the upper hand in this fight so black comes out with a very light uh, shape the horse uh, face or neck and this is the kind of move to um, prevent the cuts or protect against the push and cut so it's a move that attacks and defends in the same time black uh, found tesuji in the corner to defend his group uh, in a very active way of course white plays with fighting spirit atari to separate and once uh, black uh, white takes the stone black has no eyes with the group so this is a co-block white captures and black looks for a co-threat now if white defends black will take back and then nobi hane and try to kill the corner so not just leave i mean it will be a co but a very dangerous call for white to fight because he can lose the entire corner therefore white decides to eliminate the call and that's a good decision because it also helps the bottom group and even if black escapes on the left side he doesn't build so much territory so black covers to fix the base on the left and white switch to to the center group which is also thin now that's a pretty nice defense if uh, Black simply blocks here, White can continue the attack with a peep, so the group is still kind of heavy. And Hane, then pull back. Now, actually Black is all surrounded. So Black decides to, to defend Calm in the center, and this way White needs to add another move in order to, to secure his group in the middle. Well, playing this exchange is good timing because if black separates here, white will capture the bottom stones and keeps everything connected. So white makes shape. Black pushes up to uh, reinforce the left side. Let's see what happens here. Ah, so if black comes out in the middle, white can peep first, then push along and honey under. 
Now, if black tries to resist in the fight, for example, double honey, uh, white has Atari, and Atari like this, and set up a... Well, it's a capture already. Not even a ladder. So playing this move, uh, black reinforces a little bit his group on the left side. Now with this approach, um, white is uh, taking points in the top left corner and also tries to activate the IG of C11. So if black plays away, uh, white can uh, push and connect. Now if uh, black separates, white can leave on the left side and black has to come back and make to uh, connect his group, but his entire dragon is still on the run. There are no eyes for those uh, stones for the chain of stones on the left side. So black has to uh, bump in order to prevent the connection underneath. But white goes up and black descends to, to keep his eye shape uh, safe. So if black plays away again, this Atari on the second line is very powerful. Even if black has a double Atari here and captures one stone, luckily he doesn't have two eyes yet. It's still a call to make an eye on the bottom and gotta run out in the center. But not so easy. So black had to descend in order to keep his uh, group safe on the left side. Now he can be like 10 points there, but it was a pretty painful way to uh, save that group. So white jumps again to keep everything connected. And actually white is looking to, to attack the K10 group. So black has to... Oh wait, tuck, 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 tuck. Yeah, black cannot play G6, so he needs to pay attention in the middle. But black has to, to be alert on territory. Yeah, with this peep, uh, black is threatening to cut the two stones. And if white connects, black will jump out. Hmm, white protected here very proper. Well, the group on the right side uh, can be in trouble if white plays a double Atari at H2 and captures a... So if this happens, later on, white has some issues with the bottom group, so it will be harder to uh, attack the center. Besides, the corner can be in danger too. So it's very proper for white to play J2, keep everything connected, and, well, even if black captures uh, G6, that's only uh, 6 points, so not such a big deal. But this is an insurance for black to play h6. Now he can either jump out or cut the two stones. So next, uh, black is playing a probe peep here. And then approaches the top side, which is the, the most, uh, the largest area left on the board to, to build something. So white blocks the, the territory in the top. And that's his biggest territory so far. <coughs> and keeps the box... Uh, connected and safe so oops this area became like 30 35 points for white a pretty impressive territory to get to to have and black jumps out in order to limit that white potential in the top left but also expand his uh, top right so now white separates and it's threatening the group in the middle if black doesn't capture the two stones he will be in trouble soon That's a very proper defense in the top. So if black jumps out in the middle, white will simply invade the top side, either high or low, and then the two stones are separated and surrounded by all those white uh, stones in the area. So black needs another move to protect here. Then white is going for a base on the right side. Now black got all the territory in the top area, but that's pretty much it. This is a good probe, threatening to activate the adjet R5, so the, the proper way to defend it is S7, and now extend for a base. Now when this happened, white already has like 97% to win the game. Uh, if black doesn't respond to this move, let's say black plays a pincer, white can nobi and then connect under. And again, uh, black's wall is uh, completely useless. It starts running, and if uh, black tries to resist, White will push, Atari, Atari again, and capture in a ladder or Atari and go down. So White leaves in the corner and then Black is still on the run. Therefore, 
Black needs to play s7 in order to capture r5 and keep the corner. So white extends back for a base. That's the ideal shape to extend from r15. Now black is coming out in the middle and white proceeds with the endgame moves. <clears throat> Very big for white to play j18. Uh, that move was also big for black. And here white already uh, has enough territory and it's pretty confident in his position that he'll win the game. So black tries some desperate invasion but white decides to give up one stone and keep connected on the second and third line. Uh, it's important for white to add another move at r12 otherwise black can start a co-fight and this is the kind of co where black doesn't lose uh, many points but white can lose a lot. So if this happens, uh, pom, 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 a pip here can threaten the stones in the middle, then black takes back the call. Now this can be a disaster. So let's say white plays here to damage the corner, black captures again, white takes some profit in this area, but he loses too much on the right side. I mean, this group and this one. So that's the kind of call uh, white doesn't want to fight. That's why he protects at R12. So black pushes in the center. And now we have a little trade here. Well, black caught a few uh, extra stones in the center. So he didn't need to play a move to catch the two stones. Like this, he captured all those five stones. But even so, white hit center and he got strong enough to uh, compensate in the center. So first of all, honey here to reduce the top. Then uh, a very nice uh, attach to to check Black's reaction in the corner. And here Black played really calm to, to keep the corner. But white really damaged a lot. Then a no Stesuji to make some points on the right side. White has to turn is the only move. Keep the stones separated. Uh, with this move to connect in the center, uh, white prevents the push and cut at m4. So if this happens, white has Atari. Now when black connects, capture the two stones. If black protects here, white connects by taking the other stone. So black goes down. And then a small capture in the center. So even if uh, black lost, uh, sorry, white lost a few extra stones in the center, he got profit here, he reduced the top and also the bottom side. So at this stage, white is about 10 points ahead and there is not much to do to come back. Now the end game in the top is uh, all positive for white in center. This sun is very big too. Threatening to connect another stone on the side in center. And this move prevents the monkey jump on the left side. And this is the stage where uh, black resigned. If white plays a different move, for example, just block here, black can proceed with the monkey jump on the left side to damage a few points in center. So it was very big for white to play a move in Gote to prevent black's follow up in center. If this happens, white can play away. And then when black captures, white will respond. So this stage, if we count, white is about 12 points ahead and actually he has potential to, to build some more. Therefore, black was forced to resign this game. So now the score is 3-2 and we'll see what happens in the next game soon. I hope you enjoyed this review and see you guys next time.